what's up guys today we're going to be installing one of our 10 o cert uh, roll bars into this camaro behind me this is actually the first ls car that i ever rode in right out of high school my friend uh, clay finley bought this car and he said uh get in it we got to go for a ride you got to feel this thing so this is the first uh car of any real power that i felt which 320 some odd wheel horsepower back then really did feel fast and it still feels pretty good for a street car but he sold the car and he bought it back and now he's going through it and kind of doing it the way he wants it just so because it's got some sentimental value to him but long story short he did some work for me years ago and i told him that when he got ready that i would put one of our uh, six point cages in it in trade for the work he done for me so here it is two years later the car is here and i'm getting it cleaned up ready to put this cage in now clay is one of these guys he likes everything as quiet as a cadillac when he rides so there's dynamite everywhere which makes it super fun to get prepped up for the roll cage but i've got started i've got the dynamite pulled off the places where the plates are gonna go already in the back and up front. And right now, I'm working on getting the body putty and stuff out of the seams and preparing to install the plates. You can see here, I've got it scraped out pretty good. I've not hit this with any kind of buffing wheel or sanding wheel or anything yet. We've got these little things that I'll show you right quick back here. I gotta get in Joey's toolbox. He's got all the, the good abrasive stuff. These little suckers, they really, they're a Scotch Bright uh, roll lock bristle disc, and they really do an excellent job of getting all that nasty stuff off. If you use a flapper wheel or something like that, like a sanding wheel, it gets it really hot and it tends to smear it and just embed it even deeper into the metal, which makes it weld like garbage. But this stays a lot cooler and it'll pretty much sling it out and get it off the surface and get down in the grooves that you normally couldn't get without really gouging the metal out to do it. So we use these a lot for especially body putty and stuff like that. So this is what I'll be using to finish out where that plate's gonna go. So I'm gonna get to work in here, set up the camera and finish prepping these areas and get at least the main hoop plate and the C-pillar plates uh, in their position. And then I'm gonna try to mock up the main hoop and the C-pillars because he wants this thing painted. We normally don't paint cages for customers, but I'm doing a special favor for him. So I'm gonna mock it up and then pull all of that out of the car paint it outside the car and then put it back in all but the little section where the door bars are going to attach so i've not done that before but i know it can be done i've seen a lot of people do it so that's what we're going to do this time So I've got this all cleaned up. This is how all the sections are gonna look like once we get them prepped. But the body putty is really tough to get out of these grooves, but make sure you do your best because when you weld it, it's gonna let you know it's still there. But sand all the paint off. It had a little wire uh, hold, uh, two little fingers here. I cut that off because it was gonna get in the way of the plate sitting all the way against here. That's basically how the plate goes. Uh, there's a left and right side. We've got a perforated spot right here that kind of follows the contour of the floor to help you bend it down. That way you don't have to put so much heat on the plate and stuff to get it to 
lay down with the floor because you see what it's got to do there it's got to basically do that so weld around the sides here as much as you can and then take the hammer to it and get it shaped into the shape of the floor but right now i'm going to go over and clean the other side like this and then i'll drag the welder over here and work on getting these plates formed to the floor and then we'll move to the back and get the c pillar plates put in their position but we'll probably get the main hoop in here first and just make sure we've got them in the right position in the back and then uh we'll go from there So we got it pulled out now. If you can see with it out here, we can clearly get to all these joints to fully weld them all the way around and even put some paint on the top sections before we put it back in the car. That way you don't have to risk uh, burning your headliner or getting paint on it or whatever. It'll just make it a lot easier to deal with as far as keeping the inside of the car clean or the parts that are not coming out. Remember, if you're gonna do this, just put one little tack on the front side of the main hoop or maybe on the inside don't put it on the back because when you put the heavier weld around the bottom right there you want to be able to lean the main hoop forward and if you rock it back and forth enough it'll just break that tack off and then you can pull this whole assembly out the passenger side so we're going to finish welding this up and i'm going to throw some paint on this thing and that way it'll be dry in the morning and I can finish putting everything in. back here this morning the paint is nice and dry now so we're gonna get this piece back in the car get the tape off of it and get this part of it welded in but first we're probably gonna take care of getting the plates fully welded before we uh, reinstall the bar cameras wigging out with the white balance the Sun coming up through that door but we got the plates tacked in where they don't move right here but we still got to form this plate to the floor and get all that done. But I said I was going to TIG weld it, so I might attempt to, but this body metal really sucks, so I might just end up MIGging these plates in just so I don't have to fight it. We'll see.
those four plates are welded in. Uh, let's be honest, we're not going to win the internet contest for the best welder with uh, trying to weld these plates to body metal. So just do the best you can, guys. I usually, you'll notice in the video, it looks like I'm flashing it a lot, which on the time lapse, it's, it's uh, sped up pretty good. But I'm actually welding like uh, maybe three eighths of an inch at a time, and then I'm lifting. I'm doing that to keep the heat out of the metal because I don't pull a fuel tank and you know all the stuff's still hooked up underneath the car this isn't a stripped car this is the interior's gone out of it but everything is on it so i do that to keep the metal cool so there's not risk of fire or something underneath the metal's still going to get hot but i keep an air hose close and i'll weld that much and you'll see uh, in the video i was blowing air on it a lot that cools the metal down and keeps the risk of fire down underneath the car especially here in the fuel tank area where you can't really see up underneath there and I've had good success doing that. You can see it kind of, it's got some uh, really small B. It almost looks like a dirty TIG weld. But that's how I do it. And that helps uh, minimize the risk of fire. And that still gets it welded really good. So on this, our plates are perforated like I talked about earlier in the video, after you get everything welded up, just come back and run your bead across there to fill those holes and then sand it back and you're good to go there. So now we're ready to put the main hoop and the C pillars in and start getting everything in here for good. So you can see we've got the C pillars and the main hoop fully welded in now. Went ahead and got that put in place. Put the harness bar in prior to welding the main hoop because it's easier to flex the main hoop a little bit and get this bar in because it's pretty tight with it being notched like this to get it in, especially if you've got paint right here. That way you don't claw the paint up trying to hammer it into position. Got all the way around our joints there. Stick the tungsten way out to get behind there. It's not really that big a deal. Also waiting on the door panels. He didn't put those on the car, but when doing a cage like this, that's gonna keep all the interior, I like to have the door panels to make sure I get the door bar rotated correctly. Yes, the notch you know, goes one way, and that's not the issue. It's getting it you know, slid enough out or in at the front part to make sure it fits tight against the door panel so i want to make sure i get that right and i'd rather have the door panels here to confirm that so we'll wait on him to bring that and then we'll continue on i'll probably go ahead and clean those areas down there and get them prepped up for the plates while i'm waiting on that So fast forward a little bit, we're in the car. Again, got the plates in the front corners welded in for good. Also got these tunnel plates welded in between my legs here. Now we're gonna address the harness bar and get it put in position. I've got it in position right now, it is level. But I asked Clay to bring me the door panel because I wanted to make sure that we put this door bar 
at the right height to get the bend where it needs to be around the door handle. You can vary that height a little bit depending on how you want your fitment right here, but this is how it's supposed to fit. Not supposed to touch, but be very, very close. So I just wanted to verify that before I welded this in. And at the bottom, it pretty much goes all the way against the edge or as close as you can get it to weld. So we're gonna get these tack or this harness bar tacked in place right where it is. And then we're gonna do the tunnel bars and then work our way to the door bars because I don't want to build myself in a hole that's hard to get out of here. So now all the bars are welded in, the groove was going so I just let the camera roll and just finished it up. Now it's time to install the swing outs. We're going to do swing outs on both doors on this car. We use the Rhodes race cars, billet swing outs and they're really nice, really heavy duty. So I'm going to mark these bars where to cut the top and the bottom. Just remember on the top, don't just consider the top look at the bottom because see if i cut it there the slug won't go in deep enough back it up where the slug will go all the way in there and not dead end on the tube inside the notch here on the bottom get the other one it'll have a bolt instead of a pin like this and it will go somewhere in there don't want to put it again too close to that bend because then you won't be able to get it all the way up in the tube so make sure you you think about that whenever you're uh, cutting your tube out and just leave yourself enough room for this to get all the way down in the tube and not get into that bend so let's cut them out Now that both door bars are cut out, we're going to be trimming the door bars to accommodate for the length we're going to lose with the clevises. Now, with the ones we use, we use the road race cars like I've already mentioned. And this distance from here to here in between that middle section is what you're going to be losing. So, get your measuring tape and measure that and we have roughly two and a half inches that we're gonna be taking off of each side. So that's our next step. Now it's come time to tack these things in. What I've done on these is use some uh, painter's tape we use it a lot here at the shop but 
I got the rotation of the door bar, how it needed to be. I shut the door, verified all that. And then I used a straight edge across this and I've got a little digital level here. Put the straight edge there and get the rotation of the swing out correct. Same thing on the bottom. Use the bolt head or whatever, just make sure your level isn't turned a weird way because it'll give you a false reading. But you wanna get these as flat as you can, that way the operation of your swing out is correct and it doesn't have a problem lining back up with the clevis. So once you get those in position, use some tape to hold them uh, good and firm. Always have the bolt and the pin in place when you tack everything together, that way nothing tries to move and it's uh, good and lined up whenever you're finished welding. So we're gonna tack these together and then we're gonna do it uh, again on the other side and then we'll pull them off and weld them up on the bench, weld them up on the cage and we'll be done. So you can see from the time-lapse video, I ended up not taking them out of the car. I actually left them in the car with the bolt in it and the pin in it and done all the welding all the way around. That worked out really good because sometimes they'll pull a little bit whenever you weld them on the bench and then you go to put them back in and have to run a drill bit down through the pin and everything to get it to operate smooth, but didn't have to do any of that. Comes out super smooth and right back in so probably can't really get any smoother than that so got both sides done a way that you can check to see if your tube is flat on your rotation uh, the most important thing is to get it fit to the door panel but just to make sure it is flat you can put an angle finder here say we got around 25 degrees put it up here in the bend we got around the same thing so this tells you that the tube is rotated uh flat the way it was intended to be when both those angles match right there so on this one i'm going to throw some paint on the rest of the bars i'm going to wait to the end of the day so i don't gas this out of the shop but that's gonna wrap it up for this cage install. We keep these on the website. What you see right here, including the swing outs, would be around $1,300 shipped. The cage itself is a grand shipped, and then the swing outs, they're $155 per door, I think. But we keep these in stock. There's usually no wait time on that. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. Uh, I've always got the website linked, our Facebook, all that stuff is linked in the description. So if you need to get a hold of us, uh, all the info is there. So thanks for watching, guys. This has uh, been our 10O Cert six point cage install with swing outs. See you next time.